Today I'm here to present uh, our most innovative uh, products and solutions in the, in the high performance computing. So this is all about architecture, I'm not going to talk about software at all. Huawei doesn't develop any applications for this, but you will see that we have a big portfolio and that we can help you to understand what are the new trends and new architectures and innovations that we can we can have in in your solutions for uh, all this uh, main topic we are covering. So, first, firstly, before entering into more technical details, I want just to cover very quickly uh, what we consider that. Uh, are the challenges and the future trends uh, on HPC. Okay. Of course, initially we have the computing. The computing uh, more and more demanding, specifically in technical, technical operations, so floating point operations. So we were talking a few years about uh, teraflops, now we are talking about uh, petaflops and following. In the coming years, we will start to talk also about exaflops. This is a very big challenge, and that uh, we gain from the BioWolf project uh, a good evolution because we realized that we could uh, manage all our solutions from a, a big cluster <coughs> using. Uh, standard computing nodes, not those big supercomputers where we had to face with parallel systems, parallel uh, processors within the same big machine. And, and thanks to, to the old, we started to create uh, lots of uh, computers working all together with the same purpose. So the, that is the main reason of HPC that we have a big bunch of information and we divide it uh, in pieces between different computing nodes. We calculate them and then we uh, combine all the results to come up with a solution for a specific technical uh, problem or technical question. So second challenge that we face of course is storage because with, with more and more uh, capacity that we will need for manage all that huge amount of information, we need big storage and we need faster storage. In, in concrete, we are talking about new technologies <coughs> based in solid state disks, but also it's important to have a uh, good scalability for these uh, solutions. Uh, another point, uh, I, I, I consider this point like the core, <laughs> like the heart of our HPC, which is the network. Networking is very important now with all the new protocols that we have. We don't know if continue with the traditional InfiniBand, which is the, let's say the, the leader in, in technical in technical computing for uh, managing all the communications between the computing nodes within the cluster. But also we are facing with new uh, protocols, not only InfiniBand extended data rate with 100 gigabits but also uh, with uh, 100 gigabit Ethernet and, and so on. So we have to come up with a, with a final solution for this because it will be very important uh, to manage all that information that we are sending and interchanging between all the computing nodes, like a global memory. Another point, of course, is management with such a huge of, uh, amount of computing nodes, hundreds or included th thousands of computing nodes working together. We want a simple management. So we, we want tools that can manage everything from a single point of view in the same way physical resources and virtual resources also. And uh, also we are not in applications, as I mentioned before, but it's very interesting to, to check that uh, our uh, computing applica applications for uh, HPC can be uh, managed and can be combined with other solutions like cloud computing or like big data, which, 
is also another important part for the future trends in this way. And finally, power consumption. With all this amount of computing nodes, of course, we need to be efficient. We need to have a green data center. We need to reduce that uh, heat from the CPUs because uh, it will be a, a, a big challenge to, to consume uh, hundreds of kilowatts in, in this kind of data centers. So, just a quick view of our solution portfolio. Um, just starting from the bottom, so we can provide traditional modular data center and we also can provide container data center. The, the difference is that in the container data center you have everything that you need, all the facilities that you have in a traditional data center. So you have the re refrigeration, you have the UPS, you also have all the uh, uh, elements, uh, monitoring and management elements uh, within the same uh, container and, and it's like a, a big container that you can put in, in a space in a, uh, behind a building or on top of this, uh, on the roof of this building, so it's something that uh, you can use and install very easily without any facilities uh, from the beginning. Uh, coming to an upper level, we can see here all kinds of hardware resources and the very well known networking. So Huawei initially started uh, like a company with this kind of environments and now take a look to the big portfolio that we can offer in, in other ways, not only for HPC but for other solutions. Uh, of course, all the kind of storage with uh, the main all flash technology in most of them. And we also have computing that we will see in, in the following slides. Uh, regarding the system, operating system, we can work with Windows with the different flavors of, of Linux. We also can work, of course, with parallel file system environments, <coughs> very well known by Lostre or MPI. And uh, for managing everything on the cluster, we have our own software, which is Fusion Cluster that is open, is completely open because it's based, it's based in Bright but we also can provide uh, cluster management by Bright Computing so uh, let's say that we can customize with all the vendors, with all the, our partners a uh, fully customized solution for, for HPC, for a big architecture uh, design okay? And uh, let's take a look now very quickly to our three main values that we uh, use in our technical solutions for HPC. Okay. First one is the performance. Regarding the performance, we, we can, sorry, we have this uh, chassis, it's a blade, blade separate chassis, with the back plane completely redundant. Now we are releasing the the new version with all the bat plane based in fiber optic. So it's very interesting because the, the speed uh, improves quite a lot and also you don't have a single point of failure. It's very easy also because uh, you don't have internal uh, buses with the traditional cables. So less, less uh, failures, let's say. Uh, we have less failures. Uh, we can uh, we can put it inside this uh, big chassis. We can put computing nodes till six different uh, different housing uh, thing computing nodes. Further, if, if we want uh, with uh, storage, or if we want to add also uh, IOS, uh, different PCI cards. Uh, this kind of chassis can reach still 42 teraflops. This is a huge amount of uh, capacity in floating point capability. And also it's prepared for the, for the future trends in, in protocols, in networking communications, like uh, we mentioned before, uh, InfiniBand extended data rate or, uh, or 100 gigabit Ethernet but also with protocols uh, for communications with the storage environments like uh, the future 32 gigabit fiber channel. Okay. Our second solution is the, 
X6800. This is a very, very condensed, and we call it also accelerator solution because it's a very condensed uh, for you chassis only in a for you you can have you can provide you 20 flops of uh, computing uh, power and it's like a mini data center where you can uh, mix computing nodes with the storage nodes with switching with ios if you require to add more uh, pci cards is also very interesting because of it has n plus one redundancy and everything just with three kilowatts of uh, power consumption. So very very efficient. Uh, in, sorry, regarding the computing, uh, the CPUs you can use the traditional floating point specific CPUs like the Xeon Phi or the global purpose CPU also. You can use them to have a total of uh, eight. Uh, let's say that you can have two per computing node in total of four double slot computing nodes. You you will reach eight CPUs. Okay, and of course another important point for the performance is the storage. As I mentioned before, here we have an external storage cabinet that uh, performs very well is uh, completely IP based so it uh, escalates adding more storage nodes each of those storage nodes has uh, its own CPUs traditional uh, Intel Xeon it has also memory and it has also the internal disk and the good thing is that you can mix the protocols to communicate to that environment, to that network of storage nodes. You can use in front end InfiniBand or 10 gigabit Ethernet. And also uh, the back end can be mixed, those uh, protocols to communicate with the rest of the internal disks. With uh, this environment, you can also obtain a uh, distributed file system that can reach till 60 petabytes just in one, in a single file system in one cluster. So it's, uh, let's say, a record uh, of amount in, in data just in a single file system and, and also uh, can, <coughs> can provide very, very good performance in bandwidth. Each of those storage nodes can provide 1.6 gigabytes per second with a total of 400 gigabytes per second and uh, around 5 million of input output operations per second. That's also in the top one of the storage performance console benchmarks. Okay, so if we move now and if we change of topic and now we start to talk about energy saving, that's our second main value. Um, it's important to mention that in the future we will need to be efficient. Of course, we don't want to pay a lot of euros in our uh, electricity bill. So this should be a solution for reducing uh, that and also for, for being green with this world. In this case, we, we have the, designed our own liquid cooling solution and some people is scared about having water within their data centers. In fact, the water is flowing through the servers. Uh, the water is also flowing within the chassis. It's also flowing in uh, the CPU, in the memory, and in the voltage regulators, which are one of the uh, components which most dissipates heat in the, in the infrastructure elements. And uh, it's very easy to chill the water because we have two circuits. One internal circuit is completely closed with water free of bacteria, and the other circuit is flowing uh, through all the elements till the top of the of the rack, and uh, and then the water will flow to the to the roof of the data center. Just a small amount of water, just to avoid uh, frozen in data centers or in places where it's uh, really very cold in winter. Uh, with this uh, chassis, 
all the elements can reach 20, uh, around 45 degrees Celsius of temperature without any problem. And, and, uh, and also can dissipate 45 kilowatts per cabinet. This means that in one cabinet we can house around 100 of servers, blade servers. That's almost impossible nowadays in a traditional uh, rack environment, in traditional blade servers without this technology. So we are saving around 80% of energy. This also means that per each 100 of kilowatts that you consume traditionally of air conditioning, <coughs> with this uh, technology you will need only 20 kilowatts instead of 100 kilowatts. So very interesting to maintain that traditional 20 degrees uh, Celsius of temperature in a data center. You don't need to maintain that. You only with a few kilowatts you can have everything. And of course, lots of uh, reliability technologies with lots of patents for for this environment that we we have discovered. Okay. And the third point I wanted to, to mention is the because yeah in limited in time is the the fast delivery that we can provide. This uh, this is about uh, scalability of course. When you have a data center HPC solution, sometimes you need to deliver new services, new clusters or new storing uh, computing nodes within that cluster, so you need to be agile. This is one solution that can uh, reduce your time and your expenses. It's a modular data center where, where you can have everything, you can have all the elements, storage, computers, you can have all the switching and networking technologies, the power supply, the UPS, all the monitoring and management elements, the CCTV uh, cameras for security, so everything can be within the same uh, modular data center and can be delivered, can be installed just in one week, reducing your, as we mentioned, your initial uh, investment. Okay, uh, I want to insist about the, the full uh, portfolio that we have but also the partners that we have in our uh, HPC uh, world. So we can customize a specific HPC solution, not only with our elements, but also with all these partners that you can see here in hardware, in software, in the cluster management part or included in, in the OS. Our uh, systems are completely open and can work with all of this. Included with uh, liquid uh, cooling solutions, we also have another partner for working for, for this kind of uh, technologies, which is Cool IT from Canada. But uh, of course, we prefer to deliver our own solution. So uh, let's come up with a with a final talking about the success cases. This is the experience we have, as you can see, Huawei also the name for you maybe it's associated to networking or to the the very well famous mobiles. We have big experience working on HPC. Of course, the most is in China, but we also have a very big uh, success in Europe with the biggest machines, supercomputers, in, especially in the Eastern Europe, as we will see. We are going to cover pretty quickly four of these success cases, okay? So first one is Poznan Supercomputing and Networking Center. This uh, is an institution which provides all the systems and, and uh, services for computing, for, for the research, and for all the public administration, and, and you will see here business and science in, in Poland. It's in top 80, so it's in, in the list of top 500, is uh, position 80. It uh, delivers 
around 1.37 petaflops, so that's one followed by 50 zeros. That's quite a lot amount of uh, computing capability in, in floating point operations. And uh, we are talking about uh, more or less 1,030 servers spread in 65 uh, blade chassis. Um, this is a big, big project where we started to work a few years ago and, and it, it's very, very successful in, in this way. And also, an important thing is that we deliver the direct liquid cooling. In this case, wasn't our technology, it was the technology by Cool IT, but it's uh, reduced is re reducing uh, continuously the, the power consumption because of such uh, amount of computing nodes. So in this case, the University of Warsaw, we have a couple of projects. First project is completely oriented to HPC. They use uh, our solution for mathematical, economical modeling as well as physics modeling. So it's a technical university, and uh, and they have around 240 servers with storage and, and other OS and, and cluster management also. And um, a good thing here is that uh, it's not too much, but uh, they reach uh, around 280 teraflops, which is uh, very important in computing capability. And we also have the second project, which maybe it's uh, maybe the first or, or the second biggest uh, big data machine in Europe, with around 360 servers working only for Hadoop. So that's also very interesting. Using the same technology, Blade servers in Blade chassis, so can reach that, that amount of computing uh, capacity. Another uh, project that we have is uh, with the uh, Newcastle University in in UK. This is interesting because of they didn't know anything about HPC. They started to want to research because they wanted to do uh, human brain studies. They wanted also to do uh, to check virus and bacteria evolution in specific uh, illnesses. And they started with a few uh, servers. They started to grow. It's a long-term project. Now they have around 100 of servers, and and we have a scalability for the next five years with them. So it's a long-term project also. I wanted to to add this because of it's a technical university in in Turkey. It's one of the oldest universities in Istanbul and the most populated also with more than 17,000 students. And they have lots of projects for research because of it's a technical with engineering, with mathematical, physics and chemistry. So uh, in this case they, they use our own blade servers to create around 100 uh, servers cluster. And also, they use a big storage cabinet uh, that can reach still one million of input-output operations per second with uh, an expansion to 16 controllers. So, also very, very interesting. So, uh, I think this everything by now. Uh, I was very limited in time. I I wanted maybe to 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 talk more in detail about other specific uh, points here about other specific products but I think this is a global overview so you can have uh, maybe more details in the future in, in another sessions. Thank you very much and if you have any question I'm free to answer. Also I will be during the lunch in case you are very hungry and you want to run. <laughs> so.